everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at some applications of exponential functions. So here's our first example. Ms. Adams' Toyota Camry was purchased in 2007 for $21,000. It depreciates in value by 25% per year. How much is it worth today? When will the car be worth $100? So the first thing we have to do is sort of model what's going on in this scenario. Now, the car that we have here is going down in value. That's why it's depreciating, because the value of the car is going down over time. So we would call this exponential decay. So what I want to do is I want to come up with um, a decimal value for how that is decaying. So I'm going to come up with this model. Let's call it f of x. Now I'm going to start with 21,000. That's my principal amount, or that's what I started with. That's what the car cost when I first bought it. And since it's going down 25% per year, this is going to model what remains. So if 25% is leaving this price, that means that 75% is remaining. Now that's happening per year. So I'm going to take this decimal and raise it to the x power where x equals the time in years. Which makes sense because after the first year I would take 21,000 and multiply by 0.75. After two years, I would take 21,000 and multiply by 0.75 twice. We can maybe write also that f of x equals the car's value, okay, or how much the car is going to be worth. So the first question says, how much is it worth today? Well, what year is it? It is the year 2013, which means that in 2013, it has been six years since the car was purchased. So we're going to do F of 6. So 21,000 times 0.75 to the sixth power. And if I do that on my calculator, that tells me that the car is worth about, right, because we're probably going to be rounding some decimal. $3,737.55. So the second question is, when will the car be worth $100? So in this case, I'm giving you what the car's value is, and I'm looking for how much time has passed. So in this case, you're given f of x, and you're looking for x. You're looking for the time. Now, later in the chapter, we're going to learn how to solve this um, by hand, but right now we're going to solve using the calculator. I think the best way to do this is to probably graph 21,000 times 0.75 to the x and y equals 100. So you might want to take out your calculator now, maybe pause the video and type these two functions into your calculator. And you're going to get that point of intersection right there. And we're going to get that that point of intersection is 18.587, 100. Okay, so that means after 18.587 years, the car is going to be worth $100. So in 18 and a half years, which is what year? 2025? Okay, so in 2025, the car will be worth $100. So it's important that you answer the question in complete sentences, right? If I give you a word problem and I ask you all these questions, it's important that you answer the question that I'm asking. Don't just sort of box your answer or circle the number, it's important that you write your answer as a sentence. Okay, let's take a look at another one. 
Okay, example two. A radioactive substance has a half-life of four days. The substance begins as a 32 milligram sample. How much is left after eight days? How much is left after 19 days? So let's take a look at these words here. This is half-life, half-life of four days. Now what that means is that every four days, the substance gets cut in half. The amount of the substance gets cut in half. So let me just make a quick table here. I'm going to call it f of x even though I don't have a function yet because I'm going to get one. But at zero days, I have 32 milligrams. Now it takes four days for that to get cut in half. So after four days, I'll have 16 milligrams. After eight, I will have eight milligrams. In 12 days, I will have four milligrams. 16 days, I will have two milligrams. And it's going to obviously continue on forever in that way. So how can we come up with a model for this? Well, I'm going to start with how much I have. So I'm starting with 32. Now, again, this is going to be exponential decay because my substance is decreasing in amount. Now, by how much is it decreasing? Well, every four days, it gets cut in half. Okay, so my decay factor in this case is 0.5 or 1 half. Now, we have to be careful because there's a difference between time in total and when this substance actually gets cut in half. So I have two parts to my exponent here because I have the time in days, but that's not necessarily the same as how often the substance gets cut in half. So then I also have to take into account the length of the half-life. So we'll call x the time in days and we'll just use the letter n for the length of the half-life. So I'm going to multiply this 32 here by a half every multiple of 4. So I need to take the total time that I'm looking at and divide it by the length of the half-life. Does that make sense? Because after 16 total days, my substance only gets cut in half four times. So of course, this four here is going to change based on the information given to you in the problem. So let's see how many is left, left after eight days. Now we have that in the table. After eight days, there's eight milligrams. But if I do out f of eight, I get 32 times one half to the eight over four, which means I get 32 times one half squared, which is 32 times a fourth, which is eight. So after eight days, there's eight milligrams. of the substance. Now, we have to take a look at what happens with 19 days. You should already be noticing that 4 does not go into 19 evenly. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting answer. So we have 19 days is what we're asking about. So we're going to do f of 19 equals 32 times 1 half to the 19 over 4. Okay, now you have out your calculator, so I would sort of do out this math in your calculator. Now, you know, if I were to look at my table, 19 is going to be after 16 but before 20. So you know that your answer to after 19 days should fall in between 1 and 2 milligrams. Okay, and if you do it out, it actually does because it comes out to 1.189 milligrams.